Thank you very much uh, for the organizers for organizing this and keeping this alive over the years. Um, my name is Klaus Wilhelm from Senckenberg and I'm presenting to, today an ideal towards, semantic, uh, towards a semantic framework for interspecies comparison and screening, uh, which is outgoing from a lot of discussions over the last years. Some people here mentioned are were involved and uh, the over ambitious title probably of this is Trade Blast. Uh, First of all, this is motivated by the availability of mass biodiversity data. Uh, there are ongoing worldwide efforts to uh, produce biodiversity data and digitize it. Some of the uh, initiatives are IDBio in the US, or so DISCO in Europe, and DECOL. Uh, in particular, the idea behind this is to provide persistent repositories for data uh, of digital specimens. This, for example, is a, a digital specimen knowledge graph in DISCO. But the others look very similar, and the idea is to enable access, uh, accessibility for exploitation, mining, and semantic inference of this data. Um, one way how to popularize. Uh, never mind. Can you just kick him off? Or? Oh, cool. Thank you. Okay. This is just the idea of a pipeline. Uh, to fill up this uh, uh, knowledge graph. Uh, this is some use case from the last uh, year's biohackathon. Um, we have these digital images, like in, in, in really bulk of data, probably hundreds of thousands in this case, from the shear butter tree. This uh, is extracted from a deep learning uh, uh, infrastructure in the neural network, which uh, provides several layers. Some of you are familiar with this, I guess. So there are convolutional filters. Uh, 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 pooling layers and drop-off layers, and uh, this is only, of course, a simplification. These layers are usually stacked on top of each other, and uh, the outcome of this is uh, recognition or identification of a new trait data, here uh, mapped to a controlled vocabulary. Um, this works acceptable for traits, so for some traits you have, like for the leaf traits and flower traits, which are considered here, uh, recognition rates over 90%. Uh, nevertheless, this is real biodiversity data, so if you uh, have an uneven distribution over the trade space, for example, some trades are underrepresented, leaves tend to be more alternate and opposite, then you end up uh, uh, with lower recognition rates for these trades in concern. This is the way how we store this data. I already mentioned there's a controlled vocabulary. This is a flora phenotype ontology we developed over the last years. It provides plant structure types, shoot system, and derived from the shoot system leaves and flowers. This ontology is completely automatically generated um, based on annotations. So for every class and flow pool, there exists an annotation uh, uh, of real data in the flora, which are the basis for this. And uh, what we do with these annotations as a byproduct, so to say, is we construct a triple store, which uh, provides a spark of endpoints, this is shown here, and you can query other triple stores, of course, we have simple service mechanisms. In that particular case, I uh, queried the uh, Uniprod database to, uh, 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 for interesting, probably, protein data on latex production. This is, of course, a very rude or rough uh, uh, approximation of knowledge discovery because uh, the binding is sometimes only the taxon name. A more sophisticated um, method could be a, a, a method called Enviro Packets. We came up with, uh, inspired by ongoing projects in biomedical health, uh, in particular from Phenoscape. In the context of Phenoscape, there is a project called Pheno Packets, where you have uh, an open standard, which is a compound model for phenotypic abnormalities. You have inside Pheno Packet characteristics of patient data, diseases, and accompanying uh, publications or treatments. And the idea is, uh, and the testing came up with this, is uh, let's model an environment packet for the representation of complex traits out of this, like modeling a phenotype, uh, modeling an environment, phenotype environment relation similar to a disease. Uh, and this enables us to uh, query uh, traits uh, for specific environment conditions like temperature or precipitation. Of course, this defies the redefinition of some traits. You will uh, find a lot of classes in the ontologies and concern which are not data driven. For example, for Globo, we sometimes have these classes like uh, STEM and less than 10 phenotype or something like that, which is not exactly uh, data driven. You can't assign a, a, a quantitative data to this. This is sometimes for compatibility with uh, databases. So, uh, what I basically want to try here is to go a step further uh, to provide something like a trait based annotation layer. 
to uh, enhance the comparison between uh, wild type data, that is not what is in our data store, and which are probably underutilized plants, and the data of modern organisms, which is available free. Um, some problem with this is uh, that the classical similarity uh, analysis won't work in that particular case because similarity analysis, as some of you probably are familiar with, uh, define a difference to a state in terms of an abnormity. This is, of course, not the case in FLOPO. Flower green is not an abnormity of flower red or flower yellow. So uh, uh, some has to come up with a new methods. And um, what is the usual method now, which was already presented in the talk of Maxit, uh, 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 very clearly is that in LRP you use vector vectorization tools, where to vec, glove, or onto vec were already mentioned. The idea is to vectorize the character states, and uh, if we can probably using uh, the enviro package as base format, and if we get that far, use uh, machine learning on top of that as classifiers, uh, and try trade comparison, and look if probably a useful trade combination could be found. Thank you very much. Thank you.